Okay, here we go everybody. So, usual usual start to the live stream. We'll hang around here for a little bit while people join and say hello. Um, got a few a few guests with us today and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, how we're reopening from tomorrow and just going through what the new arrival system is going to be looking like. So we're just hanging around, wait for people to join. Do let us know who's watching. Good to say hello to all the regulars and anybody new who's watching. And as always, we'll hopefully be able to answer most of your questions. Um, I'll say a caveat right from the start is we'll probably be answering a lot of our questions in the talk today. Um, and we will have a FAQ up on our Facebook page and website. I'm pretty sure it's actually up already, but we'll confirm that um, later on. So hopefully today, and I'll turn the camera around just so you're not seeing just a road. So hopefully today um, we'll basically get everyone up to speed with what reopening is going to look like. And I'm joined today by our general manager, John. Hi. So, so blessed by the presence of, of the big man himself. So um, we're going to have a chat about what's happening, what's reopening has looked like and why we're having to open the way we are. Hopefully that should be fairly self-explanatory that, that we're reopening because we need to get people to the outdoors because that's what our purpose is you know we are here to enable access to the outdoors for the benefit of the nation um, but we also need to do it safely and maintain social distancing safety of our staff our volunteers and of course you as our visitors so without further ado i think we've got lots of people coming in already and i'll make sure i've got the comments so good morning to who we've we got in so far morning leslie morning marion Good morning, Alison. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning, Astrid. So we've actually got quite a lot of our staff and volunteers already joining this morning and our regulars. Good morning, Margaret. Um, we'll probably get going in a moment. John, what do you think? Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> John's a busy man, as you'd imagine, um, and so are we. We are literally right in the stages at the moment of getting all of our signage um, out. Uh, so what you're going to see on arrival, um, and it's obviously by booking only, and um, we'll talk about that in a moment, what you're going to see is a lot of green, new green signage around the place um, and our big, big ask from this and our reopening process is that you guys really need to work with us on this for us to make it work because if things aren't going to work we will have to shut back down again um, and you know this is for obvious reasons, we're in a, a weird situation at the moment, it's been 10 weeks so far and we are itching to welcome you guys all back and um, that's why I put the feeling today, we are excited. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to obviously going through the process today and from tomorrow we'll be able to start welcoming visitors back. So John, I'm going to turn the camera around and we're going to sort of walk talk and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get going from there. Um, hopefully uh, Sunny, our web and admin person is going to be, or Hannah, our visitor experience manager is going to be on the comments here as well. So they'll be able to answer questions in text form while we're walking and talking. Should be good, uh, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the main thing to start with is, you know, I think how we're starting, okay, John's going to hold this for me, brilliant, how we're going to be kicking off, um, I think this is a really positive opportunity when we reopen with limited capacity to maintain the distancing, is that people are going to experience Mount Stewart, possibly how it was actually intended, and, you know, it's going to be uh, very relaxed, there'll be low numbers of people, you're going to be able to actually just take that chance to really take, soak in the sights, the smells, and obviously enjoy the outdoor space, especially after our break um, that we've been there. But we do we do need to ask that you obviously follow the signs and instructions for arrival for everyone's benefit. So John, kicking off, we're gonna have a very different arrival, aren't we? Um, as we <laughs> as we welcome everyone here. We are indeed. Usually you turn up at Mount Stewart whenever you want to, um, whatever works for you, and then you park wherever you want, and uh, you can enjoy everything that we have to offer. Uh, that's all changing. Obviously, the key is to keep everyone safe. That's our visitors' safety is absolutely a primacy for us, uh, but also our staff's safety too. So to allow us to do that, we're moving to a pre-booking system. It means that we can control how many people we have on site at any given point in time, and we're starting at uh, a number that uh, we feel comfortable that and confident that uh, we can safely manage. Uh, if that works well, and if our members um, actually sort of uh, um, can uh, adapt to this quickly, then we can actually hopefully increase our numbers and get more people sort of in to enjoy this amazing landscape. That's it. So we'll take a stroll just to, to look at what arrival is going to be like. So, so again, just to emphasise, this is going to be the most important thing that 
everyone is going to be very different it's not going to be what you remember the last time you visited here and we're starting on those low numbers with a cap of 450 people per day currently it would be irresponsible of us to to go in completely blind and just throw the gates open um, we want to make sure that this works so we're going to do it very slow and steadily and we know that there's disappointed people out there and we are so sorry that we can't fit everyone in at once but there will be space and um, bookings will be released every friday is it john i think That's isn't it yeah yep. and you book online there's a post a little further back on our um facebook page that sort of details where to book and we'll keep We'll keep that detailed on 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 uh, on our Facebook page and our website as well. So, on arrival, obviously everyone's normally used to coming in the main entrance just here. So on arrival, you'll be coming straight up the farm lane here, and there'll be basically a check-in point just here at the gateways where you'll be able to show your booking through the car window. Um, so you you got to model this, John. <laughs> so pretend you're in a car. <laughs> Okay, so, so I will hopefully either have a printed um, uh, proof of booking or I will have something on my phone saying that I've successfully booked a slot. We will be checking these um, and uh, you will have to show these actually to gain entry. Um, if you turn up without a booking, we will have to turn you away, I'm afraid, because um, the capacity issue is absolutely key to operating this new model safely. Uh, we cannot flex that and we've risk assessed this um, several sort of times actually to get the best numbers for it, for, for it to be a huge success and we want this to be as successful as possible. Um, once we've proven that, that uh, we can cope with those numbers with, with the staff that, that we have on site, uh, then we can look to slowly grow those. But actually that will need your support as, as our members uh, to uh, get you on site as quickly as possible so that you can start enjoying sort of everything that Mount Stewart has to uh, offer. And that's the key thing. So yes, you know, we, we obviously sold out those slots very quickly and it's something like 90, 95% plus we're all members that are booked and make sure you bring your membership card with you with your book and you will need that. Um, and from that point, it becomes a little easier at that point. So basically what, what's going to happen is if you're using the South Trails, we'll go into the um, hard stand in on the overflow car park here as normal. And there'll be a one-way system set up here where you go down, head out onto the trails as usual, follow all the relevant green signage. And there's a one-way system all the way around the trails um, with different uh, loops added to them. And you'll be coming out through our agricultural lane into the top side of the car park. So that's how we've been able to maintain one way for the better part. There's a small two-way section on a big wide uh, track near the head of the Glen. Um, so that's just one of those places. You just need to be aware of that. We need to keep uh, distance obviously maintained. Well, the gardens are going to be slightly different and we'll walk over to there in a minute, John. Um, I suppose if there's anything to add here is that it is very dry and you know we, we <laughs> regular visitors will know that our overflow car park is a field and it's usually been quite wet and it's usually been quite muddy and it it's meant like we haven't concrete, been... <laughs> honestly it it's... is absolutely bone dry um now <laughs> obviously the irony being here of course is that you know everything that's happened this year if this had been any other year actually we would be welcoming record visitor numbers and um mind Stewart only sort of uh, become special whenever there are people in it uh, enjoying it um it's a great landscape but actually without people in it it just doesn't work for I me. Mean, spending eight and a half weeks here pretty much by myself with, with, with a very small skeleton staff like uh, yourself, Tilly, has been one of the hardest things I've had to do while I've been working for the uh, Trust. Just seeing it empty has been heartbreaking. Yeah, that, that's it. I mean, I've said, obviously, as a ranger, that at least half my role is about welcoming visitors and helping them engage and connect with the outdoors. And not being able to do that has been really, really strange. So we're so glad that we're going to be able to start reopening. So we've got a few questions coming in. Um, Heather's asking, will the dog area be open? Yes, the dog area will be open. Um, do you want to talk about the provisions that are in place for this? Yes, uh, there's obviously a pinch point as you're entering and exiting, so we're going to have um, uh, spray and various other sort of things actually, and uh, we're hoping then that uh, people can actually uh, um, uh, self sort of, um, uh, sort of queue here actually and uh, safely enter and exit. Uh, once you're into this field actually, it's a huge space and you should be able to sort of safely enjoy that, that uh, opportunity for uh, your dog to get a bit of a run. So that's the thing. So the emphasis again, you know, it's, we're asking everyone to work with us and be responsible about the social distancing um, provisions that are in place. We've done everything we can to make it as simple and straightforward as possible. We know that we're not going to get everything right first time. 
Um, so we're going to be observing, we're going to be chatting to visitors at distance, of course, um, to be able to find out, you know, is there anything that we think we can amend or adjust to make it work better? And then once we've got that first week through, hopefully we can start adding other provisions the in place. One change that uh, we have actually sort of put in place is that we're not going to be providing sort of the um, dog litter bit and sort of bags actually because there's a hard point that uh, we can't easily sanitize. So we're going to ask you to bring. Uh, sort of poo bags with you. We will still be emptying the uh, bin, but actually the provision of uh, those sort of bags actually is just too complex for us to put a safe process in place that isn't going to put uh, our visitors and our uh, staff at uh, risk. Okay, so we'll take a stroll up towards the um, the gardens area to look what the entrance to the garden is going to look like, and we'll pick up a few questions along the way. So Iris is asking, will the shop be open? Not in the first phase. I'm afraid um, we are looking at getting some food and beverage uh, back on, on site and we're looking at possibly the, the, the 8th of June uh, as having a very modest offer. Not the tea room, but actually maybe the horse box, uh, which uh, we usually put out for our larger events. It's just actually allowing people to be outdoors and, uh, and to be able to space themselves out. Any inside space is, is obviously a much higher risk and, uh, and therefore we won't be opening those at this time. Um, in terms of retail, um, we are looking at what possibility there is. So. Uh, we will hopefully be announcing something in the next week or two. I know a lot of our garden fans are probably itching to furnish themselves with some more plants from our plant collection and nursery. And I know that Tim, our nursery manager, is, is up to his eyeballs with watering at the moment. This is coming down with plants. I mean, usually we would have sold thousands of plants by this point in the year. So Tim is just coming down with the material. And it's all looking amazing. He's done an incredible job of keeping it all alive. And it's just waiting to be planted out. So hopefully we'll get that back online sort of within the next couple of weeks. So yeah, it's like I say, I'm gonna have to I'm probably gonna repeat this one phrase the most through this live stream. It's gonna be very different, guys. Um we're, I can't believe how excited I am. I've actually got a big grin on my face at the moment because it's kind of like starting to become real for once. Yeah. You know, we've, we've been maybe this is going to happen one week maybe it's not you know we've, we've been gearing up for to reopen for a while but it's been very vague for us yeah, whether we have um, been able to we obviously sort of uh, as part of our um uh, attempt to try and sort of save money on site um and try to operate within sort of uh, well with no budget uh, we cut the staff down to so around 10 members of staff for all of my Stuart and strength and lock so we've been bringing in um on furloughing staff again actually so they're just coming back today uh, and the excitement actually in seeing people again and, and actually seeing our colleagues again is just I mean, sort of a fabulous thing it's good to see people enjoying sort of that that sort of sense of company um, but the key thing is just seeing our members coming back I mean sort of we we know most of our members here uh, we have the most incredible sort of uh, bunch of people who are incredibly sort of supportive of, of uh, what we do and I hope that uh, they know that uh, we're trying as hard as we possibly can to get them all back. But there will be sort of uh, pressure on us actually sort of during these opening weeks as the capacity sort of uh, is outstripped by the demand. So we, we are seeing that and we're seeing some frustrations there. Uh, we will get people through. And if we can sort of, uh, if we can depend upon your support, we can get more and more people through and, and I think that's absolutely critical. I think you've mentioned it already, Toby. That's it. Um, I said on yesterday's just kind of like, we'll go down this way because we'll go through the cover. Um, we said on yesterday's little announcement, obviously it's volunteer week this week. Um, Tammy, who's our volunteer officer, is going to join us in a little bit. But I was so happy to be able to welcome back the first of our volunteer team last week. And, and you know, I was also talking about on yesterday's Mount Stewart moment that you know, we know that that demand is going to outstrip the availability. Um, there are over 100,000 National Trust members in Northern Ireland alone. And let's say just here at Mount Stewart, 450 slots a day. And it's similar or less at some of our other properties that are in the first phase of opening around uh, the region as well. We have so, pushed our, our potential visitor numbers actually sort of up to the maximum we actually can uh, in terms of uh, safe opening. Um, but it's, a, it's, a, it's very much an unknown. We, we really don't know how the experience is going to be until we have people on site. And I think that as soon as we get people on site, we can start to then trim and uh, push sort of those numbers if that's possible for us to do safely. Yeah. I'm just going to take a moment, guys, because this is, you know, this is the arrival most of you guys are used to. And it's not long before we'll be able to see that again. It's so beautiful. The morns are just showing really nicely over there at the moment. 
and it's uh, very still on the lock right now. Um, it's absolutely beautiful and um, yeah, we cannot wait to, for you guys to come home. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, you come home, yeah. yeah you know what? Uh, it's, it's, been, yeah, it's been a tough 10 weeks to say the least um, and I know it's not, it's not going to just ease up straight away. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this. So, um, when it comes to, uh, that, so after your ticket arrival, um, just checking through the car window, your bookings and everything, yep. you'll either go into the South Trails, um, or Hard Stand Inn if you're in that way, or if you're heading to the gardens, um, you'll be sent round our one-way loop um, and loop back round the runway here, and then come into the, the, the main car park as normal. Now from here, this is where it's slightly different again, um, we'll have a one-way system set up uh, to pass you through the courtyard area, is that right John? Absolutely. I think it's just so that we can actually get people into the uh, space, in a safe, back to that point again, in as safe a fashion as possible. Um, this narrow path actually was a major concern for us, so we decided not to put, bring people along now. We're going to take you up through a different route that has a much wider sort of uh, capacity. And it means that uh, you won't have to be in close proximity to anyone while you're enjoying your uh, visit. And that's, I mean, that's the key thing. Um, so I know a few people have already been asking already and it will be on our FAQ. So can we bring a picnic? Yep, you certainly Absolutely. can. Um, obviously find just a, a, a distant space just off the main lake walk or on the trails themselves. Um, but we ask that obviously not in the formal gardens themselves. There's a few pinch Absolutely. points, aren't there, John? Absolutely. And just to sort of reiterate, actually, we are opening the loos as well. So mm -hmm. the loos in the car park um, will be available. Um, and the loos at Temple of the Winds will also be available for people using the, the uh, trails. Those are the only loos that, that we're opening at this point in time. Um, but they will be more than sufficient, I think, sort of to deal with the numbers. Yeah, that we're about. and obviously there'll be signage to guide people in terms of the, the distance in that's in place. And we have uh, a, a, a huge, a huge like sort of list of enhanced hygiene measures that we have in place to be able to make this possible so, so john's john is a busy man he's going to head off now because we also have tammy who's just arrived <laughs> there you go. so so thank you very much john um, just before i disappear actually i just wanted to thank you for these uh, live streams they've been one of the most <laughs> enjoyable parts of being in lockdown and I do hope that uh, we find some way of you continuing these because they've, they've been a real highlight. It's already been announced after our conversation yesterday oh, that they're going to continue. Yeah, so, well. so yeah, so for everyone who's watching, thank you. <laughs> so for everyone who's watching, we're going to continue these at least once a month. Um, we may be able to drop in extras every now and then. I've put in provisionally actually one for the 16th, which is hopefully just before I go on leave because I, I really need a break. Um, as you'd imagine, I haven't had a proper day off in a long time, nor have any of us. No. So, 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 so yeah, so you can understand that um, those of us who haven't been on furlough, uh, haven't been furloughed, uh, uh, you know, we've been working right the way through all of this. Um, so, so yeah, a little bit of a break would be good. So, but I definitely wanted to be here for the reopening and, and seeing everyone on their first arrival bit. So that's going to be fantastic. So thank you very much, John. Thank you very much. So Tammy's here. <laughs> so, what a view! Is, isn't it great? I'm gonna I'm gonna put this way around because nobody wants to look at the the gristle in here. But if we look, look over there, the like... is, it's just breathtaking, isn't it? This is funny for me because for the last ten weeks I've been the other side of this camera watching you and loving it, like John was saying, loving all of the the live streams you've done. And suddenly I'm this side of the camera. Yeah. So oh, it's it's brilliant. And we got um, lots of people saying hello to you here, Tammy, on, Hi guys, on the comments. I don't know who you are, but hello. <laughs> So is it Jenny? Jenny Carlisle says hello. Oh, Jane, Jane Brown says hello. Um, Patricia says ta hello. Uh, Eileen says hello. There's lots of people um, asking questions. So I know that um, Hannah and Sunny are on the comments here as well. Um, back a house behind the laptops, just answering a lot of your questions that are coming through. But you're here basically because we've obviously had this sort of serendipitous um, reopening for volunteers as well on Volunteer Week. Isn't it a brilliant bit of timing? We'd like to think we planned that, but uh, I'd, I've thought for a while that one of the untold stories of the whole sort of COVID-19 uh, sort of crisis really is that only when we went into lockdown did people not be able to go to work, they weren't about to, able to visit beautiful places, couldn't see family, couldn't see friends, but you couldn't volunteer. And for thousands of people across Northern Ireland, volunteering is absolutely key to how they live their lives. People volunteer for all sorts of charities and the National Trust is a, a huge uh, part of lots of volunteering people's lives. Here at sort of Mount Stewart and out on the Strangford Lock, we would have maybe 450 active volunteers who get involved with us 
from in so many different ways. Some of you who are watching, you'll, you'll be people who volunteer with Will and Hugh and Thomas out on the lock. You'll be some of Toby's uh, ranger um, volunteers. We have garden volunteers, rose garden volunteers, Lilywood volunteers. You can volunteer in admins. If you've got sort of techie skills, you can support behind the scenes. Uh, we have volunteers who help with volunteering. I have people who help me do my job. Brilliant volunteers. Hello, Sarah Lowe. I think you're quite often watching these. So. <laughs> And, and Julie, different people who help me out. We have volunteers who work in Visitor Welcome, brilliant members of those teams. Retail, my goodness, Kirsty would be stuck without her retail volunteers. You do such a great job. Who have I, who have I not given a shout out to? There's got to be some. <laughs> I think that, I mean, that, that it's, it's brilliant. basically volunteers support what we do as a conservation body in every aspect of what Absolutely. we do. And something I've always said, um, you know, as a volunteer manager myself, and I actually started out as a volunteer. Me too. Uh, so, yeah. so yeah, actually Tammy was a volunteer for me um, originally as well. Yeah, yes. there you go. So, so you um, be careful, guys. <laughs> So, so um, volunteering is, is embedded in everything that we do here and it's not that volunteers replace staff and that's one thing that we always make very clear. Volunteers basically get us from doing the, the need to do's to the would like to do's Absolutely. and the would love to do's. So it's about enhancing the, the, the overall scope of what we're able to Absolutely. do as, as a body and, and, and I mean anybody who's visited Mount Stewart here alone will know that, that the volunteers are our, our life and blood in terms of making sure that our places are just that so much bit better i'm not going to say as better than anywhere else of course because that would be naughty well. but but we are the most renowned nt property in the region <laughs> uh, we'll say that we're so, so proud of being here i think that's the truth actually i think what i always describe volunteering is it's like just us it makes our hands bigger we can reach further we can do more uh, we can we can do things that we might otherwise not be able to do uh, and you know people who volunteer they, they bring to us such expertise such enthusiasm such passion and uh, and I think really what I wanted to say this morning was thank you to you some of some of you will know that we've got a few volunteers back we've got a very small number of ranger volunteers back we've got a little um, posse of garden volunteers um, coming back four volunteers um, have, have done the, the special reopening training that all returning volunteers now have to do uh, and are going to start helping um, Will and Hugh out on the lock so this very small group um, have started this week brilliant timing for volunteer week and I know for some of you it means that your volunteering role maybe isn't ready to go back into yet and that I can imagine is disappointing and frustrating but bear with us there's nothing I want more than to get uh, as many volunteers safely back into their roles as is possible but as with everything tiny weeny slow yeah, steps yeah yeah and that, that is the emphasis so for anyone who's joined a little later on the stream just to emphasize you know our reopening is going to need you guys to really work closely with us on following the various signage and provisions that are in place I've just been scrolling through the comments while you've been speaking there Tammy and the one I think the one Ironically, because you were also one of these at one point as well, is the education volunteers. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm just thinking, oh my goodness, yes, I'm so sorry. And I look after the learning team who we're missing terribly here at Mount Stewart and missing children being here. We're missing so so much of our normal business as usual. Um, we're just missing. And today feels a great day because you know tomorrow we'll begin to see a little bit of what we normally do happening again. And uh, and we're really, really looking forward to it. So Iris has just commented, obviously the third Zard scout group are missing coming to Mount Stewart. Oh. We miss you guys too. Um, Archie's, you know, like the, there's a long, for anybody who doesn't know, there's a long standing link yes. with scouts and Mount Stewart here. Um, tell me, do you, maybe elaborate on that. Yes, I mean, it's, it's had its sort of ups and downs over the years, but right now we, we would generally see maybe two and a half to 3,000 scouts visit us each year for all sorts of reasons. They have um, special awards that they do here, they come and camp here, they come and walk here, and that relationship with us is, is, is for us very precious. It's a relationship that Gillian Martin um, our learning coordinator has really fostered uh, and something that we'd be very passionate yeah. about and we, we miss scouts we miss you we miss being able to have you here out of hours when nobody else is here um yeah for sure yeah very, so, very so we, we have um a couple of overnighting sites for, right. for the scouts on the estate um, and they actually help us do some of the um, invasive species management around the estate which has been fantastic now so someone's noticed this classic car in the background and Isn't that it lovely? Jimmy's just said like go closer to the car to whose is this anyway is this I one of our volunteers um, I was going to say is it Evie's car is it Evie's? Not, no we're not I'm sure it's 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 one of our volunteers 
um, who's it's, in today? Well, I think it may be. We've also got some new fixed term flexible folk ah. in for their briefing day today before they start work again tomorrow. So maybe it's one of theirs. <laughs> Let's just say it's mine. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we can find out. So it's definitely it's either one of our, our staff or one of our volunteers. I can't remember because okay. I'm normally buried in the woods and I never see people's cars. Is it Maybe I think is. one of I think one of our returning flexible um, fixed term flexible. <laughs> I think it is. It's quite nice actually seeing it here on its own <laughs> in, the, in the park. It should park. be at the front of the house. It's, yeah. it's in the wrong location. It should be at the front for sure. <laughs> Brilliant. So, so thank you, Tammy, for that. And Pleasure. I know you're probably busy as well. But I mean, Absolutely. if you want to carry on joining me just on the rest of the walk through, um, you're very I'll welcome. For a, yeah. for a wee bit. But I think all I want to say is, guys, thank you for your volunteering. And it's Volunteer Week, and we champion you, and we we, we love what you bring uh, to us. So we'll get you back soon. Yes. Yeah. We'll so, so just to polish off, um, for those people who are arriving for the gardens under their bookings, um, you'll be heading this way. As John said, this is one of the toilet blocks that will be open. It's the only one on the side of the gardens that's open. So it's handy enough at the start and finish of your visits, which is good. Um, the other one is the one up at the top of the Temple of the Winds. Um, that's the one that is in place for the South Trails. So on arrival, it's going to be... Very different, so normally you'd be used to going down there, you're going to be going this way. Um, there'll be a mem oh no, hold on, is it maybe not? Has it changed? Yes. Ah. On arrival, you, let me just remember this. <laughs> you will go straight on as you normally would. This is just to keep it so it's as much the way you'd okay, expect brilliant. it to be. But you're going to come back where Toby just said. That's right, I remember, yes. So, <laughs> apologies really everyone. We sure about this. Don't, don't listen to me at all. <laughs> So, so yeah, so I think we were discussing that yesterday on how we'd make... We're trying to make it a really easy to remember <laughs> one-way route. So the idea is we, we go up the path here, uh, which is what people arriving would expect to do if they're going to the gardens. But you're going to turn off as if... So those of you who will remember how we do it when on busy days when we divert members off to the blue gates, that's where the entrance point is going to be. So this way first. Cool, right, so I'm back on track as well because I've been so <laughs> focused on getting the trail side of the domain ready. Um, and obviously the, the visitor service and gardens team have been focusing on making sure that this side is ready, although I did help them out with uh, some of the rear cordons as well. And that's what's been quite enjoyable about the whole lockdown process. Um, and, and obviously having a reduced team is, is I've actually been working in areas of the state that I wouldn't normally get to. You know, it's not my patch, uh, as, it, as, as it would say. And I think what's going to come from a lot of this is that we're going to have a lot even more closer working in the future i think you know sharing skills and resources that. and that yep. that's nice you know i'm trying to look on the positive of of everything that's been going on at the late yeah. at lately so so yeah so so i even got to cut the grass guys i just have to say this is so my highlight of lockdown has been that i actually was able to come in and right, go on the ride on mower and cut the front lawn and i only made one or two mistakes which have been forgiven good job <laughs> should we say quiet about that should we we'll stay quiet about the mistakes <laughs> so so actually that's it that's an interesting point. Um, so, you know, the gardens aren't going to look as pristine as they normally will do. Um, it's not because I was cutting the grass. <laughs> That's not the reason. So, so our, our, our cutting regimes for those areas that are maintained more formally, um, they've obviously been put on a long regime. So everywhere is going to need a haircut. But to be honest, I think most of us need a haircut. I mean, I took the clippers to myself. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying anything, so, but, you. you know, so, so there are going to be areas that can have long grass. But do you know what? It actually, yeah, it looks beautiful um so hopefully you guys will see that when you're obviously arriving it's rare i think isn't it to see the garden as it would be you know it's been left really to, to do its own thing pretty much for, for 10 weeks yeah and there is a it just feels beautiful it feels very still and very ready to be seen it's, it's lovely and we're used to being manicured and the garden team are just exceptional aren't we but i think <laughs> what we're seeing here is is something different and yeah, it, it is and correct. and it will really highlight again the amount of work that goes on under normal circumstances yeah, behind the scenes. Um, so hopefully again, you know, bear with us on, on everything. You know, it's not gonna look super pristine. And like I said, we're not gonna get everything right first time. So please please do help us. Like con constructive criticism is good. Um, and, and just know that, you know, we're all human too. We're also um, all pretty tired, like I said earlier on. <laughs> um, but we wanna make sure that we get open as soon as can. And of course we can tomorrow, which is fantastic. Okay. So just to reinforce anyone who's just joining who hasn't seen the announcements, we are reopening from tomorrow and it's bookings only. Um, this first round of bookings obviously have sold out. We're on a limited capacity of 450 people on this first week. And we hope to expand that um, up 
once we know that things are working okay and we might need to make a few amendments of course as you'd imagine so so from here tell me if you're arriving there so we actually normally you'd go there of course mm -hmm. that's going to be the exit and so to keep one way flows all, all arrival traffic will go this way and then all exit traffic will also go this way so just keep your distance between the two there's ollie there you <laughs> so ollie's on a mission at the moment as you'd imagine um so so yeah if you're arriving you'll come through here and to the left through the blue gates and that would normally be our like our busy days um entrance exactly. to to thin things down the gates will be open so no touch yeah. points here at all so you can feel nice and confident you'll come down here and you're going to go through the courtyard but really important to point out that the courtyard toilets are not open mm -hmm. so i think toby's probably said that already just the car park loose and the ones up at the temple of the wind yeah. so no facilities here at all so it's just you're just passing through and because it's one way and there's enough space around you can feel nice and secure about that so you that's come through here. yeah are you walking all the way through so uh, you i'm probably going to go out of signal <laughs> if i go through <laughs> okay. so so this is probably where i just stop on the intros um for this so 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 yeah once you're through here it's fairly obvious follow the green signage and it's going to be a one-way system around the lake walk it's anti-clockwise <laughs> um and then you pass through the formal gardens around the side through the swan gates and then you can obviously go where you want through the formal That's gardens, right. obviously maintain distance uh -huh. in, and then you'd come back out here. That's right. So the swan gates, you can only go in the swan gates. So you can't yeah. once you're in the swan gates, you're not you're not to come back out of that way. And that'll keep a nice one way system there. If you've done the lake walk and then you think, well, that's me for today. I don't, I don't really need to do the formal gardens today. You're actually going to be asked to exit through what we call the brown gate. And you'll find one of our team will be near the front of the house area there. who will just direct you rather than to come back through the courtyard. You'll head up on a road that's not often used, but that'll bring you out past the bothy uh, and out sort of that end. Of so the for those so the bothy, so up. the stables and the bothy's up there. Go on, Ollie, you can go through. Oh, so. <laughs> so obviously Ollie, remember he joined us. Uh, he's our assistant he's head gardener. Reunited. Yeah, he's got his shades on too. We're, we're all looking a bit rough and dishevelled, but you know it's all it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and the exit route will pass out through here. So, I suppose one of the common questions is going to be, well, what if I need the toilets? And I've had, you know, I've been here picnicking. You're going to need to pass out through the one-way system, you use are. toilets, and then pass back through the one-way yeah. system again. If I, there's I think probably we're all getting used to that. Yeah. I'm going out. There's not going to be a public loo. Um, you know, it's an inconvenience, but it's the only way we can really be sure that we've got all of our processes and procedures right. Is just to have two sets of toilets that we know that we're really managing to keep. In, in the right kind of order for everybody to be using. So yeah, just those ones. That's it. So so once again, we know that there's a lot of people who are going to be disappointed. I'm just going to head back this way because we're right on the edge of the signal. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're really sorry that we can't fit everyone in first time round. And like I said earlier on, it would be irresponsible of us just to throw the gates open. Um, if you can imagine, an average visitor day for us is in excess of a thousand to two thousand people, and that's probably an average day. Um, and the way the weather has been, and obviously compass the fact that we've been in lockdown for ten weeks. If we opened without any form of of management of numbers. It would be ridiculous and um, we would not be able to maintain the safety of our staff or our volunteers or our visitors in the slightest so, so i ask there will be increased capacity as time goes on um and and you know i think we're just to be honest and when i reflect on all of this i'm just glad that we're even still here at this stage um you know i don't want to get too sort of offbeat or, you know, when it goes but that is the reality is that you know we're actually in a really difficult situation um and that's obviously you know incredibly upsetting and disappointing so like I say, please bear with us everybody and you know, it's your membership that makes it possible for us to do what we do and we've still been doing what we've been doing even though we've been closed these places are still being looked after and, and all the costs and privileges are still there so i'd also like to say thank you so much to all who have stayed with us and we're so looking forward to welcoming you back. Oh yes, <laughs> absolutely. I actually think that the National Trust will never have been more needed than it is now. You know, with nature, beauty, history for everyone, forever, it's our sort of our, our strap line and I think having been stuck inside for nine, ten weeks, never have we needed so much to get out and to, and to, to really be back out in nature and I think we've, seems to have been, loads of people have realised being outdoors makes all the difference yeah, to us yeah. and uh, yeah, I, the trust has the opportunity now I think to, to really 
actually show its value to, to lots and lots of people and, and like Toby said thank you for sticking with us because I know that some people haven't and it's been a real challenge for some folk but um, we're, we're tomorrow yeah. we're starting yeah. again tomorrow yeah. and uh, great team feel really confident that our team can deliver the goods and uh, can't wait to see you all brilliant definitely I'm going to flip the camera around so like today's live stream is going to be quite a short one um, just because we, we want to make sure that we're ready to, to open um, and as we confirmed, we're going to be able to continue the live streams at least once a month. I've put a provisional date in for the 16th for the next live stream. I know we plan to be out on Strangford Lock with Hugh at some point. Um, I'm hoping to still be able to do that um, at some point. But we've also got so many other stories to tell um, here and obviously uh, keep you guys updated. I won't be doing as many of the daily uh, Mount Stuart Moment clips as before because, again, like sort of just fitting everything in at the moment is a bit of a squeeze but I'll try and make sure that I get as many as possible out as, out as I can um, I suppose just some closing comments from me personally is just like you know I'm not just saying this because I'm on brand with my brand so I am really looking forward to you guys coming back and it means a lot basically so thank you everybody before I tear up oh Toves <laughs> um, be safe everybody and we'll see you over the coming weeks <laughs>